So the first type of integral we want to look at is a line integral of a scalar field with respect to arc length. So I've given the integral here as a definition, but we'll justify why this is the case. So if f, a scalar function, is defined on a smooth curve c, which is given by the parametrization x of t and y of t, then the line integral of f along the curve c is given by the integral, and then we use as our lower limit of integration, we just put the curve name there, c. So this is kind of like our double and triple integrals where we wrote down the integral over the region or the integral over the volume, and we use like e or t or d or r as a region name. Here we're using c as the curve name. So we're integrating along the curve c of our scalar function f with respect to arc length, so ds. Now if you recall, ds, that is equal to the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And so there's the magnitude of r prime of t written out in full. It's dx dt squared plus dy dt squared all square rooted. So that left hand side of the integral is a shorthand for what we would have to unpack it to be if we wanted to actually evaluate it. Now why is such an integral going to be important for us? Why would integrating a function with respect to arc length actually come up in practice, for example? Well, I'll give you an example where it's in terms of area. So this might be um, a good example in order to get a feel for why we care about such things. So here's the idea. We've got this function f of x, y. You can think of this as a surface. So it's a surface sitting above the x, y plane. And now we've got this curve in the x, y plane. So here in our diagram on the left, we've got this curve in the x, y plane, which I'm sort of drawing here in, in green. There's the curve in the x, y plane. Then we got this surface sitting above it. And if I'm only interested in the part of the surface that's directly above the curve itself, so maybe I'll shade this in in purple. So here's the part of the surface that's sitting directly above the curve down in the domain. Then the region trapped between these two curves, I can think of it like a curtain, like the sort of drapes, like you, what you would hang in front of a, uh, a window. And I'd like to maybe know the area of this curtain region. So what is the area of this shaded in region between those two curves? Well, how would we find that? Well, we proceed as we do in all calculus problems. We, if we're, when we're encountering these things for the first time, we chop them up into little bits and see what happens on a little small portion. So on the left, I've just drawn the curve in the plane. And since this curve is a parameterized curve, it's starting at some t equals a value and going to some t equals b value. And so I've drawn the t axes down below. And the t-axis is what I'm going to chop up into a bunch of little segments. Those in turn chop my curve up into a bunch of little segments, which I've indicated by p0 to p1, p1 to p2, and so on. So one of these segments, for example, is pi minus 1 to pi. So there's a little segment there. And if we go over to our curve, maybe it's this little segment right here. So there is our pi minus 1. There's our pi. And above that, then, we get this portion of our surface, a portion of our curtain that we want to find the area of. Now, if I imagine that this segment that I'm looking at is so narrow, then I could say, well, let's imagine that it's capped by a horizontal line rather than the sloped one. So I imagine that it's so narrow that I can treat the function as a constant over that portion of the curve. So over this little curve segment, we can write down an approximation for the height of the surface above the segment pi minus 1 to pi along the curve. What would that height be? That would be given by the function value at some point in the segment. And that point will take to be x i star y i star, as shown here, which we called p of i star. So there's our height. That would be like taking a sample point here and just sampling off a height 
and using that to cap our region off with to find the area. So now what do we have? We have that the height of that region is f of x i star y i star. What would the area be? So we have that the area of the small portion of the region. That one given right there would be the height f of x i star y i star times the base. And what is the base? Well, the base is just that length of the curve along that segment. So that is what we can call ds or delta s, a small change in the arc length. So there's the area of a small portion. So the area of whole, and I'll put curtain in quotes, the area of this curtain or this shaded region. That will be the sum over all of the f of x i star y i stars times delta s. And then we take the limit as delta s goes to zero. So in the limit, the area is given by an integral. It's the integral of f of x, y, ds. And ds is given by, so that's f of x, y, square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. And our limits of integration on t are going to go from a to b. And here this f of x and y, the x and y, we would write as functions of t, whatever they are in terms of t. So that's where this integral is coming from. It's like trying to find the area of the region under the surface above the curve. So let's have a look at how we can evaluate this in practice. So we want to evaluate the line integral along the curve c of the function s with respect to arc length. That's how I'm reading that integral sub c x ds. And c is this piecewise smooth curve, which is the arc of a parabola. So let's get a sketch of this drawn. It's the arc of the parabola from 1, 1 to 3, 9. So it's going to look something like parabola is coming up and then it's going to go up here to some 3, 9. And then there's a line segment from 3, 9 to 4, 7. So there's 3, 4, maybe there's the 7. So there's 4, 7. So it's going to look something like this. There's our curve. That's the curve C we want to integrate over. And the function we're integrating is the function f of x, y is equal to x. because That's what's given in the expression of the integral in the question. So what is c? Well, we'll split c into two curves. Because then we can just find the integral over each of the curves and then add them up. So the first curve, c1, which is this one here, that's a parabola. So that is x is t, y is t squared, and t is going to range over the values from 1 to 3. So there's our parameterization of the parabola. What we're going to need to know is the derivative, dx dt, dy dt, and so then we can find the integral. The integral over the curve c1 of x ds is the integral. Now this is where we put everything in terms of t. So in terms of t, it's going to go from 1 to 3. Our function, which is x, that's got to be written in terms of t. So that's just t. ds is the square root of the x derivative squared plus the y derivative 
squared dt. And so there is our integral that we need to compute. That's the integral from 1 to 3, t square root of 1 plus 4 t squared dt. So we're back to a calculus 2 type integral. This integral is representing the area above the parabola and below the function f of x, y equals x. So below this plane z equals x. So let's go ahead and compute this. So the antiderivative of the square root is going to be a power of 3 halves. And so I'll just reverse engineer what those constants have to be out front. When I take the derivative of this, I want it to be t square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So I need a 2 thirds out front to cancel that 3 halves that comes down. And then I'll be multiplying by an 8t. So I'll need to make sure I have a 1 over 8 under there as well. And so there's our antiderivative. That's going to be evaluated from 1 to 3. So out front, we have a 1 twelfth. And then I get a 1 plus 4 times 3 squared, 4 times 9, or 36. So this becomes a 37 to the 3 halves. Minus 1 plugged in. So that's 5 to the 3 halves. And so there is our value for the integral of our function over the curve c1 with respect to arc length. We also have to do the same thing with respect to c2. c2 is a line segment. It's a line segment that goes from 3, 9 to 4, 7. One way to get a hold of this line segment is to figure out what is the vector that goes, so it's a terrible vector, but it's a vector that goes from that point to that point. So what is that vector? That vector is 1, negative 2. So I can get the parametrization of the line. Maybe I'll write it out as a vector valued function in this way. What is r of t, which gives the line? It would be 3, 9, plus t times 1, negative 2, as t goes from 0 to 1. So there's just our use of the fact that we know how to write parametrizations of lines. So in other words, x is equal to 3 plus t, and y is equal to 9 minus 2t. So dx dt is 1, dy dt is negative 2. And so our integral over c2 of x ds is equal to the integral from 0 to 1. x is 3 plus t. And then we've got the square root of 1 squared plus 2, negative 2 squared, which is the same as 2 squared dt. Or in other words, we have root 5 the integral from 0 to 1 of 3 plus t dt. And so that becomes root 5. And the integral of 3 from 0 to 1, that's just 3. The integral from t from 0 to 1, that's just a half. And so there's our final answer for that integral. And in general, the integral over the whole curve is just the sum of these two integrals, which we can write down as, so in general, we have that the integral over the curve c of x ds is equal to the integral over c1 of x ds plus the integral over c2 of x ds. We worked out each of those ones individually, so that's a 1 12th 37 to the 3 halves minus 5 to the 3 halves plus root 5 and then 3 plus a half is 3 and a half or 7 halves so that would be 7 root 5 over 2 and so there is our final answer. Now what does that represent? What did we just compute? So what we computed is essentially the area of this blue surface. So again, the idea was we have 
this function f of x equals x, so that's basically the plane z equals x, and we want it to integrate over this curve, which I've shown in green, that's the curve C, with respect to arc length. So effectively we are calculating the area between this green curve and the surface. So if I fill in that region between the first portion of the green curve and the surface, and then the second portion of the green curve and the surface, what we've effectively calculated is the area of this blue region. So that's it for this example. In the next video, we'll look at an, an example much like this, but now in three dimensions. See you in the next video.